So the Fold 7 just launched. I made an initial video, you may have seen it. Samsung actually sent over this cool display in order to showcase how they were able to make this device so much thinner and more compact than previous generations. And most of it comes down to Samsung display and a variety of innovations that enabled this particular design. So this here aims to demonstrate some of those advancements and essentially showcase the various layers that are involved relating to that interior display and those improvements. So it starts with this titanium plate. That's the first element. Then it moves to the OLED panel and then very importantly, the UTG, which stands for ultra thin glass. So that provides that durability and it also minimizes the appearance of the crease. So there's a lot of different aspects that are working in tandem in order to achieve that. It's not just the UTG, it's of course also the mechanical elements in the hinge that sort of pull it into that taut position. But to get away with that thicker UTG, they had to slim the rest of it, slim other components, including the OLED panel. I mean, it's really wild how thin the actual OLED panel component is relative to the other components. You also have a protective layer. This, this is called PL, it stands for protective layer. And then all those elements together give you your final display as you can see on the left hand side. Sometimes I think we lose sight of how much advancement has taken place. I've been a user since the very first generation of Fold. I really think it's the future. I, I, it's crazy to say. I didn't know I was gonna say it. This is some futuristic stuff, I don't. The 12 year old me, like holy moly, man. And they were just, I mean, it was so much fatter. The external display was less of a substitute for a traditional smartphone compared to what you have now, which is almost exactly like a slab style smartphone. I mean, the thing when it's folded is barely thicker than a flagship device that doesn't even have folding capabilities. So each generation, they've been able to iterate and shrink down these technologies while still kind of improving the performance of those technologies, for example, with the ability to minimize that crease section or the appearance of that section. I mean, this is a twofold situation, a twofold situation, because the minimization of this section has to do with that mechanical aspect as well as your display technologies. Once you have this really bright OLED display, along with that UTG, you start to just forget that that crease is there. So in order to properly appreciate the engineering and improvements here on the latest generation, I think it's important to like look at a comparison to a previous generation and it's just like, it's shocking how quickly they can refine an idea. Like you may recall the previous gen, once upon a time when this technology emerged, the folding display wasn't even completely folding, like there's daylight through there. There was a gap and it was intentional. And then the mechanism for opening and closing just a lot like kind of crunchier and less confidence inspiring. And then on top of that, just smaller displays and a way thicker device. Like if you just look at this. And that's kind of how these technologies work, right? They, the idea, the concept, and then the execution, then the iteration. And it's amazing the rapid pace of that iteration portion. And then the amount of time that has passed kind of clouds your idea and you may forget where you came from, but it's really quite impressive though when you've got them side by side and you're not going version by version through the last seven, but instead you're going all the way back and recognizing how much progress has taken place. You have something that's got a bigger display inside and out, brighter, a minimization of the distortion on the hinge area improved durability, better cameras obviously, much more substantial external display that feels more like a traditional smartphone. Pretty much an improvement on every single category enabled by some of these hardware innovations that are necessary in order to get to this place. I mean, even, even, even just opening and closing, you forget hey, with these early versions, just... I mean, these were impressive for the time. The times have changed, much more satisfying. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's different on the Fold 7 compared to previous generations. Samsung is calling this their pinnacle of foldable innovation. 
essentially just stating that this is the state of the art at the moment and they've been there since the very beginning. Apparently the enhanced durability here was inspired by bulletproof glass. And this does actually have some impact resistance, which helps for those potential buyers that are worried about durability. Those buyers that remember those initial versions that obviously were a little more flimsy and didn't pack the same durability attributes that they've been able to pack in now. So the ultra thin glass is not just gonna create improvements for that hinge section, but also for impact resistance by being a little bit thicker. And that titanium plate allows them to use a thinner panel overall while still having protection and durability. Now that durability extends also into the open and close test. Apparently the device in testing has passed a 500,000 repetition folding test. This is 6.8 years of heavy use, 200 times a day opening and closing. Let me know in the comments if your device is 6.8 years old or older. Now, Samsung has a name for its future foldable direction. It's called Mont Flex, and this has to do with what they're calling their armor structure inside of the Fold 7. It creates an optomechanically flat design in order to reduce the crease by increasing that thickness of the UTG cover glass, and they claim that the crease is now improved by 35% but the display overall is thinner. They've also been able to narrow the bezel on the outside to give you a more immersive experience, but this also just makes things feel more modern when you look at the display and you're looking at more display and less bezel. Overall, the entire thing is just thinner and lighter. So the agenda here is pretty much exactly what you'll experience when you hold it. It's this idea that you can have a thin and light device that can still remain relatively durable and resistant to the wear and tear that your smartphone experiences. And in my opinion, just getting closer to a foldable device that mimics the experience of a traditional non-foldable smartphone in its folded orientation, because that's that quick access. That's that kind of just pull it out of your pocket and interact with a message when you don't have a lot of consumption time or you're not gonna be seated for a long period of time, that kind of one-handed functionality without feeling like you have something that's cumbersome and clumsy comparative to a traditional smartphone, then it's having that advantage and bonus of being able to jump into the internal display and have that much larger, more immersive experience while minimizing those downsides of foldables like the crease section has been in the past. So this segment is definitely evolving and Samsung has been there for a really long time now. The Fold 7 is definitely a refinement and it's the display technology that has mostly enabled that refinement.